Hey guys, welcome to my video on market subsidies. Uh, this one's going to be a fully solved example with a inverse demand curve, inverse supply curve, and a dollar amount for a subsidy. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to solve for how much money the government spends on the subsidy, the consumer surplus, the producer surplus, the deadweight loss, when there's a subsidy of $10 in this market. Uh, so along the way, I should be able to capture every technical question I can ask about this model. I will still leave the intuition for you and some of your side studying, but I'll try to catch some of it along the way. So remember in equilibrium, we set the prices equal to each other, and then we would solve for a Q, and we would get this. You get a Q of 52, we'd get a price of 87. If you don't know how to do that, you shouldn't be in this video, you should go back to my equilibrium stuff. So let's go forward now. With a subsidy, instead of setting PD equal to PS, we're going to set the demand price plus the subsidy equal to the supply price. Now, in my previous subsidy video, I did all of this without math, uh, but this equation was there just to help us get the idea that the sellers will receive more money than the demanders pay. How much more? S more. In this case, $10 more. So, we're going to solve for Q sub, which is our subsidy quantity. I'm going to take this demand price P equals 100 minus 0.25Q and substitute it in to my PD plus PS equals PS equation. And so that's going to fill in this spot here. And then I'm going to substitute in my supply price, 35 plus Q, in for the PS over here. And then I'm going to substitute in my subsidy of 10. And so I'm left with this equation down here, 100 minus 0.25Q plus 10 equals 35 plus Q. When I solve for that Q, I will have my Q sub. So let's combine like terms, numbers on the left, Q is on the right. Combine those, 75 is 1.25Q, Q is 60. Boom, we got it. We know how much stuff this market will produce with the subsidy. Which remember, the Q in equilibrium was 52. With a subsidy, we will actually have a situation where we produce more of a good than equilibrium. So the first thing we could do is solve for subsidy spending. Uh, in my last video, I showed you a graph like this. Uh, let's solve for the area of that gray rectangle using just math instead of adding a B, C, E, F, G, H. Well, the base of that rectangle is Q sub. The height of it is the subsidy. The government spends $10 per unit. 60 units are created and sold. The subsidy is $600. And times 60 is 600. So we're already done with that first bit. How much does the government spend on the subsidy? Blam, we got it. Uh, next, we wanted to solve for consumer surplus, which in my previous video looked something like this. What are the area of this triangle? How many dollars of extra willingness to pay are in this market? So we need to know this PD, which we can solve for. We know the Q sub, we've already solved for it, it's 60. And we need to know this choke price, which since we have inverse demand curve, is just the intercept. So it's 100. So the choke price is 100. The demand price, we're gonna plug 60 into the price equation. 100 minus 0.25 times 60. That's 100 minus 15 equals 85. That is the demand price, $85. That is what consumers will pay for each of these 60 units of the good. Consumer surplus then is half times the base, 60, times the height, 100 minus 85. It goes from 100 at the choke price down to 85 at the demand price equals $450. All right. We got consumer surplus, half times base times height. We had to solve for Q sub and for PD. But then it's just a triangle like we would always do in a simpler market. But what about producer surplus? Uh, this one, everything below the supply price, above the supply curve. Uh, so we need to solve for PS, the supply price. Since we have an inverse supply curve, we already know that this choke price is going to be the intercept of 35. So the choke price is 35. The supply price is 35 plus 60, which is 95. 
And so we can solve for a producer surplus because we know it's half times the base, which is still 60, times the height, it goes from 95 all the way down to 35, which comes out to 1800. All right, we are zipping along. Let's move on to dead weight loss now. The area of this triangle over here, we've actually already solved for all the information we need. What we would need to know to solve for the dead weight loss is the Q star, the Q sub, the PS, and the PD. Or if not the PS and the PD, we could just remember that our subsidy is $10. That's the height of it. It's $10 high by definition of this problem. So remember that Q star is 52, PD is 85, PS is 95, Q sub is 60. We're good to go. Dead weight loss is half times the base, Q sub minus Q star, times the height, PS minus PD, or, you know, the shortcut, we could just plug 10 in, which is half times 60 minus 52, times 95 minus 85, which is half times 8 times 10, which is 40. $40 of dead weight loss in this market. In closing, I just want to give you a couple of ways to check your answers. Uh, one thing to do is when you solve for Q subsidy, the most important thing you can do is make sure that this equation holds. Uh, you set PD plus S equal to PS, but make sure that later when you solve for PD and PS, that this is still true. If not, you got the wrong Q. So in our case, 85 plus 10 equals 95. We're good to go. Another thing we can do is we could compare our equilibrium to begin with. I didn't solve for it in this video, but the equilibrium total surplus in this market would have been 1690. And what I would expect to see is that the consumer surplus plus producer surplus minus the subsidy, because it's money going out, not money coming in, uh, plus the dead weight loss will also equal 1690. And does that hold? 450 plus 1800 minus 600 plus 40 does indeed equal 1690. Those are two little ways you can check and make sure your answers are right. So I think that's all I've got. Uh, we solved for everything I said we were gonna solve for. It should feel pretty similar to when you'd solved for all these things with a tax. The only difference is that a subsidy is just a negative tax. Uh, so between my tax video and the intro to subsidy video that I made last night before I made this one, this shouldn't have been too hard of an extension. So I hope it helps. If not, too bad. Good luck and happy econing.